If you like imagining shapes like this ball, but in four or more dimensions, you should be a mathematician. French mathematician Henri Poincaré asked the question a hundred years ago, what's the simplest possible shape in any number of dimensions? Well, get ready to wrap your head around this next story from Paul Willis. It's one of the world's great mathematical problems. It's so important to mathematics that the prestigious Clay Institute offered a million dollars to anyone who could crack it. And finally, a reclusive Russian mathematician has done just that. It's a big deal for mathematics. The Poincaré conjecture in its solution is, is the pinnacle. It's like getting to the summit of Everest. Posed in 1904 by French mathematician Henri Poincaré, the Poincaré conjecture asks if the sphere is the simplest shape in three dimensions. And a warning, this is pure mathematics. It's complex stuff. So if you come away from this story understanding anything about it, you'll be doing better than me. To help explain this mysterious mathematical problem is maths whiz and comedian Simon Pumpana. Simon, what is Poincaré's conjecture? Well, it means that the simplest closed object in any dimension is the sphere. Uh, can you make it any clearer for me? Here, what's this? Well, that's a cube. Right. But watch this, I've got a straw in this. <sighs> OK, so you can inflate it to become a sphere. That's right. And that's what Poincaré's conjecture is about, then? That you can inflate any shape to become a sphere? Mm, yes, but not all shapes can be inflated into spheres. Well, like what can't be inflated? Well, you, for example. Right. If I pricked you and blew you up, what would you become? Well, I'm heading that way already. I'm going to become a sphere. No, you're not. Reason is, you've actually got a hole running all the way through you from your mouth to your bum. If I blew you up, you'd end up a big, fat donut. And there's a very simple test mathematicians like Poincaré use to see if I'm a donut or a sphere. Here's a basketball. Right. Or a normal sphere. Okay. And here's a loop. Yep. And what Poincaré did is that he put the loop around the ball and found any which way he did it, he could always shrink it down to a point. Yeah, sure, but that's going to occur for any shape, isn't it? No. Well, what other shapes are? Uh, oh, yummy. Put a loop around this guy here, and if I shrink that down to a point, it gets stuck. OK, so there's a difference between the two. That's right. Boncare said that the surface of the sphere is simply connected, whereas the donut is not. So this is Poincaré's conjecture? Yeah. Poincaré knew that simple connectivity, that idea, was enough to define the sphere, but wondered whether it was going to be enough to define spheres of high dimensions. Finally, mathematicians have solved the problem and now know that the sphere is, in fact, the simplest shape in three dimensions. It seems simple, but it's taken more than a hundred years to prove. But why would anybody care? You're on 702 ABC Sydney with me, Adam Spencer. It's about ten past seven and coming up... This Here's a man who should be able to answer that question. Mathematician and radio announcer Adam Spencer. A conjecture that for a hundred years has been beyond the grasp of some of the greatest mathematicians in the world has now been solved. It redefines what the human mind is capable of and I think that's really important. Amazingly, the solution may actually help scientists understand the shape of the universe. There's not yet an everyday application for the Poincaré conjecture, but that doesn't discount it as a major mathematical breakthrough. Mathematicians are always doing what in other fields is called blue skies research and sometimes it is just for the sake of the glory of, 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 of the quest but a lot of the time it has applications that we may well not even be able to picture now 10, 20, 500 years from now. And what about the genius who solved the problem? As it turns out, Russian mathematician Grigory Perelman is as mysterious as the conjecture itself. It's an incredibly famous problem, finally solved by a reclusive, very different type of mathematician. He's, he's rumoured to still live with his mum, rarely ventures out in public, didn't want to accept the Fields Medal, which is the Nobel Prize for mathematics, has no interest in it. Who knows why? Is it, is it part of the mystique? Some people theorise it's because Perelman believes science is truly pure, and it's the discovery that's important. 
It's also rumored that Perelman won't attempt to collect the $1 million prize on offer for solving the problem. Now, I think I actually understand the mysterious and wonderful Poincaré conjecture. But turning down a million bucks, that I'll never understand.